I'm a fan. I'll watch that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, definitely, I'll definitely peek in on that. He just makes me laugh. I, I can listen to him talk about just about anything. His accent. sense of Yeah, but his sense of humor, I love it. He's yeah, a he's very a witty and, and, and bright guy. There's some genius about him. Yeah, there's a lot of genius to him. All right, let's do third down. And uh, we're going to start with golf. Because if you watched any at, at all of the U.S. Open, you heard it, uh, whether you're there for five minutes or not, He's arrived. He's officially coronated as uh, the next Tiger. The, com the comparisons to Tiger went on and on and on. <laughs> and on. Uh, yeah. uh, what do you make of that reaction to a man who, although he's 22, he's has one major now? I made of it that the love for Rory was inspired in large part, in large part, by the unlove of Tiger Woods. Because I, I sensed an outpouring of relief from the gallery and especially from the announcers on, on lots of mm -hmm. networks who, who came across as if they felt like the game had been held hostage by Tiger Woods over this long Tiger reign because we all loved watching Tiger hit shots we'd never seen before. I can only speak for me and I think a, an element of hardcore golf fans did not love watching Tiger's throw golf clubs and tantrums and spew profanity in front of the gallery and the national TV boom mics. So here came a kid with Tiger's talent and with his teenage hype that, that Tiger had. Yeah. And he was finally living up to it because he showed some maturity and some humility in bouncing straight back from that collapse at the Masters that I, I think has rarely been seen in sports. That, that was impressive to me. He's a cocky kid, Rory, but he's a likable kid, and he likes the media. He enjoys the, the interaction with the media, and above all, he respects the game of golf in ways that Tiger, to me, never respected. We heard that on, and we heard that all, all, all weekend after. long. Yep. And, and I understand what you're saying, but it's just not apl applicable to the larger picture. If we're talking about casual golf fans, I, I hate to be the one that busts everyone's bubble, but Rory will never be as big as Tiger Woods was because Rory doesn't bring in a different, diverse audience that Tiger Woods did. Tiger Woods brought an element of golf fans that had not previously been there. And if Tiger dominated the way Rory did, I guarantee you the ratings aren't down the way they were uh, when Rory oh, I, I, swept and lapped okay. the field. People in 35% down. 35% down. That would not be no the surprise. case if Tiger Woods was out there. Okay, because Where's Rory from? Not America. Exactly. Right. That's, and that's that the other has a lot to do with it. Tiger, yeah. Tiger's American, and, and he's also multi-ethnic, which mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. Because he I was agree. bringing in African American viewers. He brought more to the public golf courses. He created an interest. He created a different audience. And if, if this guy is not doing that, then how could he possibly ever be on the same popularity level that Tiger Woods? So I hear the respect for the game, but I'll, I'll also note that that didn't start to come out until Tiger's scandalous. Uh, mm -hmm. We saw it, but it, it didn't become an issue until Tiger was the yeah, golfer fell off. I don't know. There were those that had People questioned his... People gave him his... a pass for that because he was winning. Yeah, but I think and, we had been critical that, at yeah, times I, of But you're a hardcore point. golf fan. I, you do not represent... I, the people that they really want to bring in. Okay, but we just heard David Faraday say that every heart at Congressional yesterday was beating yeah. for Rory to win. That's what it was. That's, that's, that's what I'm that's saying. Yeah. They, were the there. Course. they were there. They were there, but what if you're not there? Yeah. I mean, it's okay, but that's not the question. We're trying to just to, to translate why this outpouring of love for this kid from Northern Ireland. It's because. All of a sudden, golf is free to be somebody else's besides Tiger. Do you, we do you we don't that? have to give him a pass. Well, whose fault is that? It's, it's, not, it's not Tiger's fault that he was so good for so long. He still is good, but it's not his fault. Yeah. Um, I think people just hated to see him win. So they loved it at the beginning because, like Jamil said, and you said, it was something new. Now, after a while, they said, well, who's the next golfer that's going to compete with him? No one stepped up. Now, right. all of a sudden, Roy comes in, and he's only won two tournaments. And now everyone want to say, well, he's the next Tiger Woods. No, he's not. Like Jamil said earlier, win 14, and then we can start talking. Yeah. Now, the other thing, too, that should be brought out is Tiger became a more polarizing figure on that fateful Thanksgiving exactly. evening. Before then, and no one discussed that. No, that I other than you. No, there was, there was inside the game of golf, there's always been that debate. Right. People, always. But, but I think publicly, everybody was so yeah, thunderstruck I, by his dominance. I want to make this point. I did not grow up privileged in the game of golf. I grew up on a public golf course using clubs from a pawn shop, and that's the God's truth. That's how I learned. 
learned. So I'm not an elite uh, country clubber here, but I learned to respect the game. And I was very offended and said so on this show often by the way Tiger disrespected the game. That's the outpouring from the announcers who were a little bit muzzled here because, yeah, he's so good, you can't really talk about it. You have to kind of give him a pass. Okay, but let me ask he doesn't you, get a pass But let anymore. me ask you this, Skip. Are you, it sounds like you're saying, you can feel free to comment, are you saying that Rory's bringing back the good old days? No, the good new days. Well, I, I like, like, it's just, he, he's, he's a, I, I, every Euro was saying he's a breath of fresh air because they know he's basically a decent kid who, who treats the game the right way. And well, what me, are you saying you, about you, you Tiger Woods? You keep saying say that, he's though. not Tiger Woods. Listen, he's, he's got a chance if he's healthy and he keeps his personal life in order, which is a big if, because he's got a long ways to go here. Trust me, he's got the goods that nobody's had since Tiger emerged in 1997. Well, just the skill set. Just the skill yeah. set. But when Tiger came in, he was the same way, a good kid. And he was a breath of fresh air. And then you Well, spoke. no, he wasn't. Because right away, he disrespected. Listen. But, no, he was a breath clubs. of fresh air. Exactly. Just by the way he looked. I mean, you Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, but I'm looking at I don't care what color he is. Was. I, I'm accepting what, for what he is. I loved it. I said, well, I'm a 97. I'm, I'm as glued as I was yesterday. I was still glued. Yeah, but where, at what point did you see something from Tiger Woods where you said, uh-oh, I don't like what the, the way he's treating the game? 98? Because 99. I know Jamel's making a point that she thinks that became an issue after his no, scandal. Hey, there I, were big hints I, of it. I wrote this in 99 at the PGA at Medina when I worked for the Chicago Tribune, and Tiger and his camp did not like it and let me know about it the next day because I took him to task for it. I don't care. Yeah. It's out of line. It's behavior where somebody much bigger than me should have stepped in right away and said, no, you can't. You can't have. Finally, we had Tom Watson after the scandal saying, you know, Tiger Woods needs to clean up his act. Well, why didn't you Again, say that? Why did, I know, say it before. <laughs> they on. didn't say it when yeah. he was playing. Right, right. And they and the, the impact also on the on the pocketbook, mm -hmm. on the wallet, is not going to be the same. I, you know, because no, Tiger Woods close. brought a got completely yeah. different financial. He, he made a yeah, whole that's lot a of money debate. for yeah. Phil Mickelson. I don't, yeah. Well, that's why well, I said debated, this kid is not going to be as big as no, him. We debated Thursday, I believe, I asked you, and it was sort of impromptu, but I had asked, has any athlete ever had yeah. an impact on any sport, ever? And, and I think we were all kind of in agreement that yeah. from a financial standpoint and a diverse standpoint, bringing a whole new mm -hmm. crowd of people to the sport, I think it might be Tiger. I agree. Interesting things, a couple before we move on from Tiger Woods. First of all, we did pull a clip from Rory talking about other past U.S. Open champions, and he didn't mention Tiger. I think it's fair to point out that in his on-course interview, I believe it was right after he won, he, he mentioned Tiger he, Woods. He said, I tried to emulate him. He mentioned yeah. this in his post game yes. a couple of times. Yeah. But, but the translation was, I tried to beat his Pebble Beach performance. Right, I know, but, but he, yeah. he did pay homage oh, to, sure. to Tiger, and he wasn't completely oh, uh, disregarding it. And sure. also, this just in, Tiger Woods um, saying... At home with leg injuries, Tiger Woods released a statement Sunday congratulating Rory McIlroy, who became the sixth winner to go wire to wire. Congrats to Rory. What a performance from start to finish. Okay, and that, was, that came out right after the Enjoy the win. Well done. I yeah. just wanted to throw that out there, too, because yeah. I know a lot of people are saying, has Tiger said anything? What, what, well, that, there you have it. That's, what, that's Tiger's point of view. All right. Let's go back to football. The Baltimore Ravens have been right there. The last couple, they've, the defense is there. Flacco is an emerging quarterback. The, the, the discussion here is, is Joe Flacco the kind of quarterback that can lead the Ravens to a Super Bowl? Can he? I think he is. I mean, if you look at his, his career, his three-year going on four-year career, I mean, the guy has gotten better each and every year. Well, now, when we, when we have gotten into the playoffs, it's not solely his fault, so you can't pin it on him. Um, but what he has done, he has matured in the game, and he's made those steps that I think every elite quarterback has made mm -hmm. in, the, in their career from, from year one to year three. And he's shown and proven to everybody that he's capable of leading a team to the Super Bowl. It, it fathoms me why Matt Ryan continues to get all of the credit and all the hype. Maybe because he's a, he was the first quarterback chosen. And Matt is good. I played against him, and, and we lost. And he's a very good quarterback. But if you look at what each one has done. I think Joe has proven that he will win a Super Bowl before Matt Ryan. Well, he has a nice playoff history. Exactly. Joe does. And I that's all you're judged by is your playoffs, but really. I, don't at you the think end Matt of the day. Ryan's just on a little niche higher? No. Than well, has Matt all. won a playoff game? No, they got routed they, by Green uh, Bay. Green Bay, yeah. I know. And then so they I, lost to Arizona the year before. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. No, I, that's why I bring it up. I just, yeah. I, I know Joe's won at least three, He's three and four, four in the postseason. Okay. Well, Joe Flacco is basic. I, I think they can get it done with the Ravens, but he is pretty much being 
uh, stereotype based off two things, playoff record and the Steelers. He hasn't been very successful. I mean, he kind of broke through this year. But Mm -hmm. in general, that's the one team that seems to be tormenting him more than any other. They tormented a lot of teams. A lot of teams, but especially them because you guys have the rivalry with him. And the perception is that this guy kind of crumbles when it comes to the Steelers and when it comes to playoff pressure. I see the maturation that you're talking about, but I'd like to see better decision-making from him in crunch time, yep. particularly against the Steelers, mm-hmm. before I'm all the way on board. It's like I'm a little bit on board now, but I can be fully on board if I can see that growth process. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just don't see it. You see him doing bonehead things yep. that a rookie would do, and I you agree. think, well, this is year three or four. Shouldn't he kind of be past that but already? they said the same thing about Peyton Manning. And he they finally, he, and they, they said that for a lot of three years. years. They still, exactly. they still say yeah. that. Yeah. But then he eventually yeah. wins, he yeah. wins the Super Bowl. He did. So and some even discount the Super Bowl that he won. Yeah. Because uh, it was against, against the, Bears. the Bears. And Rex Grossman. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, okay, that, that's all fair. Look, very quietly, Joe Flacco had a pretty good year last year. 25 to 10. 10. Mm-hmm. 25 TDs to 10 interceptions. And he did throw the equivalent of a walk-off TD pass at Pittsburgh in that regular season game to TJ, right? That, that, was, that was a big-time throw. But big picture, as, as your defense, especially Ray and Ed Reed, get a little older and a little older, I, I don't know. You, you can't just win with your defense. There's going to come a point where Joe Flacco has to win that game at Pittsburgh in the postseason. Wh- whatever big playoff game on the road or whatever it is, you can't depend, as some quarterbacks did in the past, on just your defense getting that job done right. for you, right? So I, I have talked to a number of players, m- more than five players who have been through the show on other teams other than yours and they question whether even you guys in your locker room deeply believe that Flacco can make that play that that has to be made to beat the Steelers and Pittsburgh or whoever on the road in a big the Jets in a big playoff game I just don't think I mean Joe has proven to us he's proven to the organization that he can go and win games and like I said this is not solely his on him in the playoffs. Right. I mean, we had plenty of mistakes in the playoffs. And, it, and obviously, it goes on the quarterback because he is sort of the captain of the team. So, But I, I just think Joe will have his day, and he, he will have it sooner rather than later. He was pretty good a couple of years ago yeah. on the road at oh, New England. Uh, that, yeah. was a, that was a running back game. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was. But <laughs> come on. He, he managed it. Yeah. What they do. But, but then he made a star out of Ryan Clark. How yeah. do you do that? Oh, <laughs> all right. Shot We're back. Fired. <laughs> I knew that was coming. We're back at the debate desk for more first and 10 in 12 minutes. Derek Mason knows a thing or two about playing wide out. So what should we expect from Plexico Burris if he gets picked up by an NFL team? We're going to dive into that when we come back. Also ahead, with Donovan McNabb's future in Washington still not clear, what advice does his former college coach have for the, for the star? We're going to find out when Paul Pascaloni joins us. And... The Rays' Sam Fold continues to put on his personal defensive highlight reel. Are these two amazing catches enough to crown him king of the weekend? We'll vote on it coming up.